Sweet. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. Oh, man. Tonight is a very special night. I'm very excited. I always get very excited when we talk to Dr. Chris Zeno. Um, he's tuning in from Texas, correct, Doc? Yes. Awesome. Did. Awesome. And sometimes you're traveling, so I got I to gotta catch people where they're at. But um, Dr. Zeno is, if you don't know him already, he's absolutely crushing it in Texas and has been for quite some time. He, uh, this is his fourth season. This is our fourth season of Facebook Lives and podcasting. And this is Dr. Zeno's fourth season with us. And I'm so, I'm so stoked to have him on the show as always. And we have some fun on here. Um, as you see in the description above, I think if you're watching on Facebook, uh, we, our first topic is going to be Disney plus, and we're going to just, we're going to break it down. We're going to see what's going on. And actually we were talking a little bit off camera, what it is and you know, what it isn't and, um, how we can, how we can, uh, hopefully help answer any questions and have some fun here. And, um, you guys can engage with us in conversation as we uh, talk about all things chiropractic and then all things Disney Plus as well. Um, so without further ado, Doc, before I let you, you know, kind of share a couple accolades at least and a little bit of about yourself um, as you always do and then we'll dive into content and stuff. But I want to do that after we thank our initial sponsors here and then that'll give me some time to uh, share this and spread the, spread the wisdom all throughout Facebook here. So... Um, let me pull that on the screen here and then we'll be back in a jiffy guys. To inspire women is the elite boutique coaching company for chiropractors who are looking to live life and run business in a way that is personal, unique, and authentic. They focus on business systems and money mindset mastery. So you can pay down debt, be more profitable and serve more people. Their goal is to empower you to achieve success by your own rules and your own definition. Head to toinspirewomen.com now because they know there's a better way. Cairo HD, superior cloud-based practice management software. Cairo HD is a user-friendly all-in-one EHR solution built with one mission, to help you run your practice like a boss. Learn more at cairohd.com. Total Clinic Solutions is your go-to source for purchasing both brand new and refurbished chiropractic equipment, as well as phone support for repairs and maintenance. Call Derek and allow him to combine your wishes and his 23 years of chiropractic equipment expertise to find what's best for you and your patients at 704-622-4089 or head to TotalClinicSolutions.com now. It's time that chiropractors look beyond spinal alignments and measure the nerve connections that keep our patients feeling strong and performing at their peak. CLA designed the Insight scanning technologies to transform exams and generate powerful reports that give practitioners the certainty they have been searching for. Learn how CLA has partnered with practices around the world by going to InsightCLA.com. Spinal hygiene products are designed to educate your patients on the importance of lifetime spinal care. To learn more about how spinal hygiene products work and to download the patient education material for free, visit spinalhygiene.co. Again, that's spinalhygiene.co. Easily share your passion for chiropractic and look good doing it with Above Down Apparel, offering a premium lineup of principled apparel that's impossibly soft, sustainably sourced, and chiropractic AF. Visit abovedown.co and follow them on Instagram to learn more and score yourself some sweet chiro swag. SCED is the all-in-one system that allows for amazing control and flexibility of your scheduling. Yes, your next new hire. Every aspect of when and where you service your customers is at your command. SCED is tightly integrated with your existing EHR system. This software was made by a chiropractor specifically for chiropractic. No joke. Go check out their latest care plan feature by heading to go.sked.life slash legendary pod. Health Business Builders covers every aspect of building a health business both online and in a brick and mortar environment. Dr. Dan Sullivan and Dr. Dave Tuhill and their team will help you on a regular basis to develop an in-depth strategy 
plan, and accountability to not only assemble a plan, but also make it happen. Head to healthbusinessbuilders.com so they can help you get the results you never thought were possible. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Back to the legendary chiropractor podcast. We are live with your host, as usual, Johnny Ruder, and our guest today, Dr. Chris Zeno. I should say tonight, it is 8.30 p.m. Eastern time, and so we are absolutely loving life, and uh, we both just got done with great days. Doc, share a little bit about yourself, or share something, since you've been on the show so much, share yeah. something that most people probably don't know about you. Um, that you haven't, you, you know, usually shared because I know I've asked you this question on this show before and you've probably yeah. answered it. <laughs> so go ahead. I mean, I, you know, since 2005, I've been practicing, uh, in chiropractic and just really, uh, with 15 years, you got to see, uh, you know, just some wonderful, beautiful things that, that, uh, it's been able to do. But most importantly, uh, we'll talk a bit, a little bit about marketing. You get to see how those trends change and, uh, you know, so whether I'm speaking to the new doc or even a doc that's been in practice 15, 20 years, sometimes you get stuck into a program or a way of doing something that's successful. So let's say I did something 10 years ago that was very successful. And when things get tough, you default and go back to that same formula, but it doesn't work as well today for whatever reason. And so sometimes your strength, you know, in your practice, you'll, you'll notice you'll develop very good strengths. Sometimes your strengths become your weaknesses because they wind up holding you back from expanding, getting creative, uh, thinking outside the box, doing things different, uh, and, and uh, actually evolving with people, culture, and the profession and not uh, becoming a dinosaur. And, uh, you know, I, I've studied and all my mentors were dead. You know, I studied old audios of all the greatest chiropractors that ever lived, but they were dead, you know. So it's amazing to see between studying them practicing on my own and seeing what the new generation of docs are doing today, you know, there's definitely, uh, you know, in a smaller amount of time, things evolve much quicker. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like what you said. And I am actually going to make a point right off the get go yeah. here is like, I, I, I think that you made a great point about strengths, right? And strengths, we get so used to them. Um, and we become almost stagnant and complacent with like, we're really good at this. Let's just keep doing it this way, right? But as we talk, um, as and this conversation goes on, um, as we get later into the podcast here, we're going to talk all about micro markets. We're going to talk about marketing, and we're going to talk about trends and how they've kind of changed, and and how you have to not conform necessarily to what the trend is, but how you at least have to be aware of what it is, um, so you can start marketing yourself differently and your business meaning your chiropractic practice uh, differently. So, um, but first doc, let's start here with a fun topic. Uh, Disney plus. Um, I mean, Disney plus is, is everything right now. It is, it is all over the place. Every patient that comes in the door is asking, Hey, have you heard of Disney plus? And my, my answer is yes, I've heard of it. I don't actually use it, but I want to explain to some of the people who probably don't know what it is out there listening. And if you do know what it is, um, great. I'm glad you're a user. I'm glad you're a consumer. Um, but it's, it's this platform for, it's a streaming service, just like Netflix is. And, uh, it's all the Disney related films and TV shows that Disney has produced over the years from when you were a kid doc to when I was a kid to the brand new star Wars that was just released. So, I mean, people are, are fanatics already about it. Um, how, what do you talk to me? Like, what do you think about this whole concept of like people going into their own, um, things now taking things off of Netflix, going into their own, um, cause you know, we have Hulu, we have Netflix, we have these major, you know, corporations doing the same kind of thing, but now we're going to start seeing more and more and more of them pop up when they all realize, Hey, you know, some of these contracts are running out and you know, all, you know, we want to take and leverage our media and our content and put it on our own platform kind of thing. What do you, what do you think about that? What are your thoughts? Well, you know, I actually heard about Disney plus from you like 20 minutes ago because <laughs> so, I really don't watch TV, but let's look at what's happening. You know, these are all the new TV channels and it's all about attention. 
And so the whole idea is like, just like Facebook's a TV channel, Instagram's a TV channel, you know, uh, TikTok's a TV, a TV channel. So these are now your new TV channels, if you want to use that analogy. Mm-hmm. And Netflix, it was juggernauting for sure. Like they destroyed Blockbuster, they juggernauted. And then Amazon Prime, you started people saying, well, we'll just put our, our, our one-man comedy show on Amazon Prime. Why are they doing this? Because you know, they show that they have, uh, there's no monopoly there. Mm-hmm. And it, these are your new TV stations. This is where, and it's not like it used to be like, oh, I have to be home by eight o'clock to watch this thing. You could watch anything on demand whenever you want. Uh, you don't even have to record things anymore. So it just, this is the evolution we were talking about. This is the way people do things now. Um, TV, I don't even, like, I don't, I haven't had cable for 15 years uh, for TV. Yeah. And now, now you don't. I even watch like the tennis championships online, right? So now it, that's that's the way it is. It's cheaper. And what's really cool is when the – like Disney, of course, they have a choice. They could do this. And they're going to grab attention of millions of people. You said what was it? 14 bucks a month, 15 bucks a month? I think like twelve ninety nine or something yeah, like that. Even, yeah, even. Let's say 13 – and automatically it's hundreds of millions of – it's a billion, It's automatically a billion-dollar company like that. <laughs> Just like that, just like that. And and it's crazy too, because I I think of, you know, Disney from a kiddo's perspective, right? And it's like us adults are now, you know, the talk of, it's the talk of the town. It's everywhere um, to all people. And it's just amazing to me that not only they, they have the audience, we know that, right? Disney obviously has the audience. But at the same time, it's amazing. Like you said, it's a billion dollar idea. As soon as you're like, hey, you know, can we get all of these videos and this content on one platform for people to use and pay a monthly subscription? Because that is a conversation in itself too. It's like people are willing to pay monthly subscriptions for things because that's just the way, that's the way of life at this point. Um, No matter if it's a monthly subscription for your groceries to get delivered to your door and possibly put in your fridge for you, no matter if it's a subscription to music or to videos or whatnot, um, some sort of entertainment, but now it's becoming more and more uh, a part of accustomed to our lifestyle. Would you agree with that? Yeah, it's part of your overhead of living. Yes. Right? And the subscription price is priced just enough. Kind of this is what I did in my practice. You know, What was that monthly price I could charge for a lifetime member that oh, that just ran under the radar of having an emotional visceral response? Like 12 bucks, you're like, yeah, it's 12 bucks. Right. Uh, should I cancel it? I, like you don't even think about it. You know, so that's so they, they have the pricing correct. And like, but here's the thing. We got to understand this. As powerful as Disney is, even Jeff Bezos said it great. Jeff Bezos said that if Amazon does not continue to think creatively, um, he foresees that it would actually it will be gone mm-hmm. very soon. Like he lit, like as Amazon, you're like, how is this thing going to go anywhere? Or how's <laughs> Disney going to go anywhere if they're not evolving? Yep. If they're not doing things differently, if they if they stick to their old original model that made them successful, then um, they would be extinct. You wouldn't even hear. You would, would like the next generation wouldn't even know what Disney was, right? Where Amazon was. So this is why it's so important that they have the cre- creativity, different ways, staying on top of it. And you know, creating these platforms, they ha- it's it's a have to to survive. Yeah. Just now, and like when you think of old Disney stuff, it's archaic. It's like, you know, when they drew when they made their cartoons, someone literally had to draw that stuff out, right? So now they have CGI. Like there has to be, you have to go with the culture and the times. How does the culture? How does society they absorb um, entertainment? So you can't talk about the good old days. We cannot talk about the good old days in chiropractic anymore either. Yeah. That's Too a good point. Times. Yeah. It's in the past and it's like it doesn't matter what happened, how it worked or what happened or how good it was. It's just like it's it's irrelevant. It's past. And in fact, when we talk about the past, we're talking about an illusion anyway. It's our perception of what we thought it might be. We don't even know if that's even the truth. It's just <laughs> some type of an illusion. The future, like we just got to deal with what we're dealing with now. And I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with this now going, well, can I just talk in front of a group of people and Pied Piper them in? Because I, I never did marketing, ever. Mm-hmm. And, uh, but now it's, this is how people communicate. How do I get in front of people? You know, I got to get on their feed somewhere. Yeah. You know, and then, and then so, right, it's like, here, I'm not marketing, but there's a couple seminars because I, I make a calendar. Um, and I think this is good for everybody to do. You know, right now, everybody should be planning their calendar for next year. Mm-hmm. And this is a good segue. You're like, this is the way I do my calendar. <laughs> uh, your, your office is last, meaning... You first put in 
like your holidays and your trips, your family stuff first. So where are you going to go for Thanksgiving next year? Christmas, Day, you know, you put that in there. So we make sure that nothing gets messed up with that. And then you put your personal stuff in there. When are you going to work out? When are you going to do this? When are you going to do your own personal things? Then you have your work in there. You know, you, I always put that at the end. So we make sure we make time for you. So part of that second tier is what personal, what, what seminars, um, I, seminars, events, or experiences will you go to that will get you out of your routine? Uh, because when you're in your routine, it's like Groundhog's Day, and there's no, it's very certain. Your, our routines are certain. We know what we're doing. I, I, you know exactly what I'm eating. You know what's happened at 7 in the morning. But even though that becomes a nice disciplined routine, it eliminates creativity and the unknown. So the unknowns are, where, are the nutrients of where all the creativity and possibilities and new opportunities and new relationships come. So you have to get yourself out of your current routine every couple weeks or months and that's where seminars, events, experiences puts you in a in a new atmosphere that that cultivates this creativeness, and that's what's happening. Uh, that's just another form. This is where these ideas are, are coming up with. So uh, even with chiropractic, you know, I realize that these seminars I, I I paid thousands of dollars for. You know, today I paid three thousand for one. You know how I found out about them? I saw an ad somewhere. I saw like a like a an Instagram clip and I watched it and I went on YouTube and I watched them and I, I spent time with them and now I'm a fan. Right. Right. So that's like, great, I'm going to go. So now I call them wanting to pay them money. So I was like, wow. And here I'm the one that was stubborn of getting content out there. So free content, good content, no pitch, um, you know, over to the long game definitely works. And it's something where I do believe everybody should uh, pay attention to what Disney and everybody else is doing. Because they they're clearly uh, always ahead of the pack. Because they they need it for their survival. Was you got this billion dollar company that could literally go under, uh, like Toys R Us or all these other companies. These they are blockbuster. They were erased from history because they did not, uh, they were not willing to change. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and you bring up so many good points. Um, but the the biggest thing here is like we I go back to those those strengths cuz Disney could just kind of roll on you know the theme parks and the mascots and the this and that and and but they're not right and that's the thing that's the difference and what you said about Jeff Bezos and Amazon it's like those are the conversations in those in those closed door meeting rooms where they're like sitting there and we think you know oh this is easy right this is going to be around forever our kids yeah. are going to use Amazon Eh, not necessarily unless they're doing the proper things to maintain with the times and the trends and everything that you that we mentioned. Um, because again, Amazon could just say, you know, hey, we're great at putting all of your products in one place mm -hmm. and shipping them in two days, right? And it's like, and now you see after that two-day shipping came out, you see FedEx, you see UPS, you know, get, scurrying around the clock to say, hey, how do we become better as as companies as yeah. well? Because it pushes all of your competition. Like we've had, I know our very first competition that we had um, on this podcast and on this show was all about competition and, and creating that within your, your chiropractic circles um, and being able to compete with yourself, with one another. And, and it's a healthy thing, right? It's a healthy yes. thing to make you a better person and make your business better. And I think that exists no matter what scale you're at. And I think that's uh, something that gets lost in translation a lot of times is like, yeah, Disney's a billion, bajillion dollar company, but at the same time, they're still, um, they're still working their tails off in order to provide the best product for the times. And I think that's really, I think that's really important. And well, and and they they understand the concept of the seasons, meaning that they understand they understand the concept of a winter and a summer. Yep. You know, so in the winter, like they're storing up for the winter, and then when when it's winter, they're are, they're thinking, well, what the hell do we have to do to make sure that we make it through the winter? And it's it's uh, so they're more scared about crashing than we would ever think. Right. Because we, we, we don't think of like, wow, they're so successful, but they cannot do what they're doing today to survive in the future. Yeah. They gotta always keep on and 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 it's listen, we're talking about one of the greatest companies in the world, but it is a law. Like we're talking about laws, universal laws. The same thing goes with our profession. And let's let's get into the marketing. Go for you it. You know like in Cairo, it's like, well, I want to just stand there on the side of the street with my spine and preach and evangelize the message of chiropractic. 
and that that's awesome and that's what we ultimately want but then again it's like is it too general you yeah. know is it is it uh do we almost have to uh, i always say this and, and it's not to downplay people but i feel as chiropractors we have to protect people from themselves mm. so therefore we have to position our marketing in a way to protect them from themselves what's best for them meaning if we have to do like niche marketing like you said micro niche marketing Yes, I know it's symptom specific. You're like, yeah, dude, I get it. But if it takes Bill, it, if it takes Bill who has a headache to see shit, I got a headache. Oh, there's a thing about a headache, and I'm gonna like if it takes Bill that amount of uh, fishing for Bill to get him in front of you to then teach him the principle, mm -hmm. then you kind of got to do it. You know, you you gotta you gotta start. It's not compromising. It's always looking at the end result. Right. It's looking at the end result. So yeah. I, I really believe when you were talking about micro niche. I found that um, huge, and I started testing that with my dinners because uh, I have uh, I've seen, you know, when I when I ran something that was neuropathy, let's say, I I was astounded on the amount of people suffering with neuropathy that can't even walk. Right. I was like, oh my god, like yeah, but otherwise they wouldn't have come in for chi because they they would never associate chiropractic with neuropathy. Right. But but chiropractic doesn't help neuropathy. It allows the body to function and heal without interference. But they don't get that. These people can't even walk. They're afraid of getting their, their feet chopped off. Uh, they're on drugs that well, one lady uh, the other day, she broke her feet because she she uh, went up, get up to went to the bathroom. She saw so much gabapentin, her foot hit the bedpost and she didn't feel it. She heard it crack. So people are on these mind altering drugs that are lobotomizing them. And you're, we're sitting there going, well, chiropractic's the answer. It's like, yes, it's the answer, but how are we going to get that person in front of you? Mm -hmm. We have to ring their bell. We have to meet them at their at their desperation point. Yeah. And then we got to then bridge it over. So I really think, uh, especially with social media now, even direct mail, guys, I use, I'm actually doing direct mail. And you're like, direct mail? Who the, like, I don't know about you, but when I get my mailbox, I literally... Take my mail and I throw it in the trash. Like, <laughs> I was like, who the hell? What a waste. But there's people. Because we think we, we eat our own dog food. So I'm thinking, well, I don't read direct I don't look at direct mail. I don't uh, I don't sign up for a free dinner. There's no way I'm going to, I, I personally never go to a free freaking dinner. Right. And it's like so all this sh stuff that I wouldn't do and that I base my world and my marketing against what, what would serve me or not. Right. And not realizing that there's plenty of people, guys who love their direct mail. Uh, there's plenty of people who love a free dinner. You know, I mean, there's people, there's plenty of people that uh, would look at a newspaper, see something, and go to that seminar, with or without food. So you have to, and, and uh, but it works, if you say, listen, we're doing a wellness talk, no one's gonna go to that. But if we said we're doing neuropathy, mm -hmm. yeah, you're gonna have, and you're gonna be astounded by the amount of sick people who can't even walk crawl into that room. So I really think micro niche is really, really, uh, it's something out there, man. And with, with social media, you could really nail that down. You can target pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that goes into, I mean, deeper, deeper content. Yeah. I mean, and it, it, the conversation is never ending to be honest with you. Um, but you, you brought up amazing points and micro niching is like, you know, this word niche or niche or however you want to say it, um, it doesn't matter, but it's, it's hot right now is what I'm going to say. It's yeah. like, it's the thing to do. I, and in my eyes, right. And where I'm at with, you know, the legendary chiropractor and building out this platform and everything like that, I try my hardest to look ahead and say, is this going to be around for long term? And if so, how long, right? Because there's always going to be a pivot in, in marketing, there's always going to be a pivot in the audience that you're going to be talking to. But I, I think that, you know, I interviewed Dr. David Tuhill, if you're familiar with that name. Yeah, but I know Dave. Yeah, so Dave, Dave and I broke down all of the different levels of marketing. And it's like, you have these different levels of like, say, for example, you have a guy with, we'll use pain, but you can use anything, asthma, yeah. you can use anything, um, neuropathy, right? But yeah. you have a guy with pain, and then that person has no idea chiropractic exists, and, but it is in pain, right? So you have to market to that. But then there's another one that says, hey, I'm in pain. I know chiropractic exists, but I don't know where to go, right? And then there's another level that's like, hey, I have no pain, no symptoms, no nothing, and I don't care about chiropractic, 
and you just have to exclude that group because yeah. I feel like a lot of people, and we talked about this in our podcast um, with Dr. Dave, and it was like a lot of people market to that inevitably like yeah. noiseless group or silent group that's like they're never going to come in your office and they don't care what you have to say. Um, and a lot of times it's that those micro markets and those niche markets that are that you if you tap into them, you become part of, you know, their solutions. Uh, you can really make a big impact not only in their life, but also in all of the people they know who they probably have a, some sort of camaraderie and community with who are suffering or having the same kinds of issues going on. And I, I mean, that's just that's my personal take on it. And I think it's I think it is here to stay for now um, and and really explaining to people like, hey, this is my ideal client. This is who I'm who I'm after and saying, hey really defining that avatar and then getting them in your office. But like you said, right, you're like, I wouldn't go to a free dinner. I wouldn't check my mail because I do the same thing. Personally, I check yeah. my I check my mailbox once every, gosh, yeah. <laughs> two to three weeks. It's like, and my mailbox is like, I'm in an apartment. It's like this big. Yeah, stuffed. It doesn't, yeah, it's stuffed with crap, yeah. but it's all like coupons to the local what grocery store. And I'm like, I don't need this, right? But some people are avid um, in, in ch checking their mail, receiving their mail, loving cards, r loving handwritten notes and stuff like that. So yeah, there's, I think there's something out there for everybody. Would you agree? No. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's allowing your own biased opinion, uh, actually get in the way of you succeeding. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and when you talked about those three people that, uh, uh, to, uh, Till Hill was talking about, like, you know, but I, I don't, I think, uh, of course, you need to look at the, the micro niches and all, but I still think the general people, because what we have is very similar. Like, look at what Tabor Smith is doing. It's like there might be someone's like, I don't I don't know chiropractor. I could care less about a chiropractor because they don't understand what it is. It's like right. me saying, listen, I don't I don't know dentistry. I don't give a shit about dentistry. I don't care about dentistry. And But the dude's got teeth, and if he just understood it, he's like, oh, yeah. Right. You know, I don't want wooden teeth. So – so we're, we're, we're still – we have a very wonderful profession that we could take the person that could care less about chiropractic or feel they doesn't need it. But when they realize what the principle is, um, you could easily – I mean I, I would say 50 percent of my patients are people who never knew they needed care. You know, So uh, that's just getting really good at what you do. But – I'm just saying that because I don't want anybody listening to this to be like, oh, shit, you're right. So let's just do niche. Like, no, no, no. The person who could right. care less, um, you could, if you do a good job, you could just like their teeth be like, oh, yeah, I, I this is something that needs to be part of my daily, my life. But I, I definitely think right now what I've noticed, uh, but I did, I, but I will tell you the same thing, like this, this living your best year now or living your best life ever and finding the top three killers and avoiding them by 98% and having predictable health, they're fancy terms. It's very general and they don't pack a room like they used to. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I think what, and, and in regards to packing a room, right? It's like the importance of that is you can have a profound impact on somebody's life. Um, and I, I really, I really want to encourage people to say that. And it's not, it's not a bait and switch. It's not a salesy tactic. It's it's really having a conversation of, I have this thing called chiropractic that I am providing as a service, and I you know I just want to talk to people who have these different issues or said ailments going on in order to bring them into my office and adjust them um, and show them the power and the principles yeah. of chiropractic, and that's that's what's most important. So, Doc, before we get going or before we hop into the next topic here, I want to quickly take an ad break. And then right. when we come back, we're going to talk about the not-so-unique selling proposition for chiropractors. Sounds good, man. Every chiropractic clinic needs a compliance program. If you are not sure what that includes or why you need one, let Dr. Robin from RHDC Consulting help you build your chiropractic compliance if you are ready to get started, head to robin halemykajabicom and let Dr. Robin guide you to the end result. Imaging Services' primary business is chiropractic solutions. With over 45 years in the industry of helping chiropractors, Michael Tokash offers free consultations on building your business. 
In the past year, Imaging Services has installed over 100 x-ray machines and digital x-ray systems in over 42 states across the United States. For more, head to theimagingservices.com. The 56-Day Chiropractic Boot Camp, building badass female chiropractors who are instinctively successful. Head to 56daychirobootcamp.com slash legendary for your free endless referrals cheat sheet now. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Awesome, guys. Welcome back to the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast with Dr. Chris Zeno and myself, your host, Johnny Ruder. Um, thanks for sticking with us. And we just, I, I did some Googling while we were on the <laughs> ad break and we found out that it was uh, Mickey Mouse's birthday on Monday, the 18th. He was he was apparently created in 1928, which makes him 91. Um, so to go along with the Disney Plus theme here, I, I thought that was that was kind of funny and ironic. Um, and also, Doc, it was your birthday too on Sunday, and happy birthday to yes, you! Yes, thanks. Man. I uh, I, it. I I think that's awesome, and um, I hope you did something fun, something something Close you can it. enjoy. So <laughs> good. Um, so now, Doc, let's talk a little bit about unique selling propositions, or what I'm calling a not so unique selling proposition for chiropractors and why I'm saying that is because we sell or we provide as a service, as a product, um, health and wellness. And that to me, it should not be a unique selling proposition for chiropractors. Um, all chiropractors should be preaching health and wellness and well-being for their patients so talk to us a little bit about what it means to be in the health and wellness paradigm in today's day and age versus what it was, you know, even five, 10, 15 years ago, because I really feel like there's a shift taking place. Well, sure. Well, you know, 10 years ago, you used to have to, you were a conspiracy theorist for think there was genetically modified food and uh, people got upset when you said drugs were bad for them. You know, but now no one wants drugs. Everybody knows that, there's, you know, you find what I'm saying, like there's, there's a lot less education that has to go on. You don't, you're, well, you're not too much of a conspiracy, uh, conspiracy, uh, conspiracy theorist um, today. So you see that. So I think people are a lot more knowledgeable and they understand what's going on. They, but uh, they still have an issue with insurance companies. They still want that freaking thing to pay for everything. So I think that's why we need to just let them know, hey, you know, uh, when it comes to insurance coming, I think this is good, and this is how I really get people off that subject, and I think what I'm about to say would be really gold, and this is how you explain to someone. And I, I, I play the devil's advocate. I'm like, so if chiropractic, if I, if it does everything I just said it does, if, if, if removing the interference from the nervous system, if it can allow the body to heal, if it's that good, if it's that amazing, you know, how come – what? You know, a gentleman – I would say a gentleman asked me how come – my insurance wouldn't pay for it. How come the VA wouldn't pay for it? Like, like the, the full model, like, like, you know, what we require of them. How come they only pay for a little bit? How come they wouldn't pay for it? Because it's cheaper than surgery. It's cheaper than drugs. It makes you healthier, right? So this makes no sense in the world why they wouldn't fully pay for it. And then, then you switch around. They're like, well, let's look this way. And I have everybody participate. I'm like, would everybody agree that exercise – would is a very cheap, very cost alternative to um, cutting your chest open for heart disease. And everybody's like, yeah, like, as a ratio, if you believe exercises would make you healthier and it's good for you, and everybody is there, good. And there's plenty of things, even colorectal cancer is good uh, from exercise, right? So we know that. So, Mike, how about right? Does everybody agree that eating organic food would make you healthier and would help uh, prevent a lot of diseases? So, every hand, great. I go, how about therapy? Let's say you're stressed out. Imagine if you had a therapist that helps you deal with stress level. Would that help uh, like blood pressure and, and stress levels? Would that be healthier and cheaper? Yes, than getting becoming dead, you know, or being on drugs. So I mention all that stuff and people agree. I'm like, well, does insurance pay for any of that? And they're like, no. I'm like, can we valid I go so, so invalidate nutrition, exercise. Should we just now does because they don't uh, pay for it, should we, should we just now just disregard those things that, as being good for you or healthy? No, they're all healthy. So we cannot base the validation of something due to the approval or the coverage of an insurance company or not. 
So that gets them off the bandwagon really quick. Because they listen, like they they uh, it's not a drug. Chiropractic is not a drug. It's not a surgery. You know, it's it has nothing to do with that. So um, the proposition with chiropractic, like you were talking about, you're right. It's it's but selling health and wellness isn't sexy, dude. It sucks because <laughs> no one get no one gives a shit about being healthier. I'm sorry. I, I know it. I know it because you know why? I witnessed their actions. They only care about their health when they lose it. Yep. Or it's inconvenience to them. Watch this. Now, this is where I'm getting. It inconvenience them. It's affecting something that they care about. It's getting in the way of their goals. It's affecting something that's maybe more meaningful, like earning money. They can't work. They can't job. They can't have sex with their spouse. They can't play their golf game. So when you realize it, like no one, no one's, everybody will tell you their greatest asset is health, and it's not. And the way I could prove it to you is show me your credit card statements and show me your checkbook, and I'll tell you exactly what your greatest asset is. So knowing that, because it's the success 101 answer, so there today what we have to do is we have to talk to their goals and their wants, period. What do you want in life? Well, I want, you know, I, I, this one lady, she had 20 grandkids, and she was a chef, and she couldn't, she couldn't even cook for them. So it didn't, like, it, her... Her knee, her knee and back, her back pain and knee pain, it didn't matter at all. What mm-hmm. mattered was it affected her from cooking and with her 20 grandkids. So it's like, I'm going to speak to that. Because yeah. you know what? They're not going to pay you any money for chiropractic. What, what, what they do is they will do chiropractic if they feel, feel, that, see the keyword is feel, if they feel it will get them back to doing something they loved to do. So you got to ask that person, what has your pain costed you? You're like, what is the, what is, what is your pain cost you? What can you no longer do due to your pain and symptoms? Yeah. What is one thing you, what is one thing you wish you could do again without that? And then you have to really aim on that. So chiropractic is the road or the path to, you know, getting off drugs. Well, why? Because it makes me sleepy and, uh, and gain weight. Okay. So, so it's like, right. So we got like, I think chiropractors, they don't go deep enough. So they don't want to get off drugs. They want to get off drugs because the way it makes them feel, mm-hmm. makes them feel like crap. They gained 40 pounds. It's like, oh, so you want to get off the drugs. Uh, but if they felt fine from the drug, they wouldn't want to get off it. So it's like, oh, cause you feel horrible. Uh, you're, you're less effective and you don't, you don't feel good being heavy. You don't, you don't feel attractive in sex anymore. Do you? Well, no. See, I'm hitting like so. You you just want to get adjusted so you can get off the drugs, so you can lose the weight and feel attractive and sexy again. I mean, like we have to be very mature on. Hey, listen, guys, you're a chiropractor, and unfortunately, your patients are using you. You know why they're using you? Because they're trying to get something back in their life that they loved and they lost mm-hmm. because of their their issues. So let them use you. I know that. So I'm going to tailor that and educate them and speak to them in a way where chiropractic, they're buying their goals back basically. Like when they sign up for care, that is a trans, that is an exchange of value that now we're going to go on a program that is actually the thing, the solution to whatever that is that they want to get back. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's always their why. So you speak to their, you speak to their why, even though it has nothing to do with uh, I think we we get we aim too shallow. We we stop at the symptom. Mm-hmm. Oh, your back pain. Well, see, there's a subluxation there causing your back pain. No, this subluxation there, Bill, is the reason why you cannot you can no longer have sex with your wife. You know, like this is the reason why you feel impotent as a man because like I get dirty with them because that's the truth. Mm-hmm. It's not like the subluxation doesn't cause back pain. The sub this subluxation. I don't say I don't even say it causes your back pain, which is the reason why you can't pick up kids. I'm like this subluxation is the reason why your five year old great grandchild is not going to have good memories growing up of who you were because mm-hmm. they're going to see you as a person who wasn't able to play with them, be with them. They're going to see a very in, they're going to see a grand, a great grandparent in pain, in a bad mood, and unable to play with them. And the thing is, your five year old has no idea where chronic pain is. You kiss their boo boo, it's gone. So I talk, I talk that to them. So that subluxation is your grandchild not having the ultimate memories growing up with your great grandparent the way you want to see it. Yeah. So that's the truth because that's why they're there. They could care less. And you know what? That why, that reason is attached to their dollar. Mm-hmm. Yep. Not their back pain. Yep. Back pain. So I got a back pain. You want you want to, want me to pay you forty eight hundred bucks for back pain? Eh, it's not that bad. Right. You know, or you know what I mean? Like, uh, and I got to do all this work. 
You see, it's not here. That's why you can't get frustrated. But you got to attach it to the deepest, dirtiest why you possibly can. And this is not a sales. This is not a sales Trojan horse thing. This is the truth. Like they're, it's not. They are unable to do something. And once you can nail what that thing is, chiropractic is the answer to allow them to do that again. Yeah. Now to say you live longer and you're like that's great and that's nice, but for someone it's not fifty five hundred dollars nice. Right. Right. You know, but when it's something that is like, yes, this is my goal is I, I am you know, I I wanna be there for my grandkids and, and you can get to that that real truth, then you just then it's your duty to be their teammate to get them to that. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, you told them you could, and you told them you could help you, or you told them you could help them. And I, I think it's really important to, to emphasize here, because I wrote down, before we even started, I was writing some pre-show notes, and um, I, I, I went along this topic of, you know, the not-so-unique selling proposition, and yeah, you're right health and wellness isn't sexy, right? It's like, we know that, but it, but it's also been sold, right? Yeah. For, for eras, right? And generations. Yeah. Um, and, and so it's, it's not necessarily being, you know, saying, Hey, we have this great product. Here you go, shoving it in their face yeah. and saying, this is where we're at. No, no, no. Like you said, you have to tear away layers in order to speak truth to them in order to, for them to say, Hey, this is worth this, right? And and I I because once that back pain, let's be honest with each other, like once that back pain's gone, they're gone. Yeah. Right? Like they have no reason to stay in your office because you helped them with what you told them you were going to help them with. They they have no idea. Like, yeah, now they can play with their grandkids, but they have no construct of like how that happened, um, except for the fact that now they're out of pain. Now they can play with their grandkids. They have no idea how that ties back to chiropractic. They just thank you for your service and mm -hmm. they used you and they move on and out the door. Right. And it's, it's, yeah. it's fascinating to, to hear you say that. Um, and I, w I wrote one word down yeah. before the show started. And I'm actually really glad that you, you kind of brought it up and it's getting to their goals and wants, but that's, that to me is being personable with somebody. Right. It is getting yeah. to their level, building and creating a relationship that will last a lifetime, because if you don't build a relationship with that person and that patient that will last a lifetime, do you think that they're going to be a patient for a lifetime? It doesn't make any no. sense. It, it doesn't make any sense. It's like, oh, I expected them to stay in my office forever. Did you create that kind of relationship where they should and they want to be there forever? You know, that, that it's, it's a, it's a double edged sword when it, when we start talking outside of, or like at chiropractic seminars and conferences with yeah. people that are like, well, they don't do this. And it's like, don't blame the patient. This yeah. is on you. It goes back to you. And I know we talked about that in our last podcast. It's like, you got to look yourself in the mirror and say, Hey, you know, I, I need to step up bigger. Right. Um, do you have anything else to add to that? Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's the ultimate rapport is finding the truth you know, and really getting down to the truth. And I mean, and it could be simple stuff like this. Hey, you know, if I was, John, if I was able to wave a magic wand, what is, what is the main thing you would want to go away? Yeah. I mean, like, it's okay to get right to it, you know, <laughs> yeah. and then really get down to it. But we, we have to stop at the symptoms, guys. Mm -hmm. the, the symptom is just a symptom. It's what can they no longer do to that? Yeah. And if someone says, no, I'm fine. I could do everything I want to do. Well, don't you want to take care of something now? It's very tough for people to see. Not many people have a have a proactive, preventative mindset. Right. High high thinkers do, and many yeah. people watching this do. They're like, yeah, I'm preventative because uh, you're able to future pace. That's one of the extremely successful qualities of the greatest champions and people in the world was the ability to future pace. Yeah. And we're able to do that, right? But some people are like, well. I'm fine now, you know, like it just doesn't bother me that much. But if you could get down to something that they can no longer do or taken away from, from their performance, then that's what it is. And you're right. So it's like if I care about you and your grandkids, we're just using that as an example, like we're getting them back to that. So it has nothing like, yes, I'm correcting that subluxation. Yes, that will allow that back to heal that, you know, on its own, allowing this to happen. But then they feel like, listen, you're, you're, the, you're the teammate for helping them get back something that was that meant the world to them. And therefore, when they're getting that back, it's like, great, you got that back. So now are you going to go back to the old recipe that got you there? No, 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 no. So what are you going to do for the rest of your life? I'm going to maintain this. Right. 
Yeah. So you know what? Because we're not maintaining. You follow what I'm saying? Because number one, looking if you take X-rays, looking at a curvature and a number on a curvature, that get that again. That gets very technical, and again, it's not sexy. Uh, what I mean by what I mean by sexy guys, you know what I mean? There's there's not this like emotional drive to it. Right. right. It's like okay, you know, I'm a 20 degree curve, and it's very. Uh, it's very uh, very robotic, right? Mm -hmm. But it just when you're able to hit the chord uh, of that person, and when someone says, "Well, I got to go home and think about it," like I think you guys, you can't stop there. But like, how long did you have this problem, John? Well, for two years. So I go, "You've been thinking about this for two years every day." Right. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, so what's one more night thinking about it? I'm like, and I tell them, "Go." So it's that, guys. I'm just gonna let you know, and uh, this is like gold. <laughs> no one ever has to think about it. No one has to do more research. No one has to go home and pray about it. You ready? It's all about the money. It's about their value and what you're giving. So they got to think about it. Just get right. Be like, because we know that that's BS. They've been thinking about it. They wouldn't be in your office. Right. They got to pray about it. Listen, no, it's their way of being nice to you. Doing your research. That's just a nice way of saying no. Um, so it all comes down to the money because if you say, well, if it was free, would you have to think about it? They're like, no, I do it. <laughs> so, like, you know what I mean? Like you ever look at a shirt in the store and it's like a little expensive and you're like, nah, 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 but it was free. You get it. Right. So it's, it's, if they don't get what they want, they, they just didn't have the value mm -hmm. on that. So if you feel that, they'll be like, listen, um, and just, you don't have to put them in the position to be like, you got to think about it. Uh, I know you've been thinking about it for two years, but listen, John, is it the money? Right. Because they're embarrassed. No one will admit to it. And they're like, yeah, it's, it's a little bit about it. And then you just t have the money conversation. Right. Yep. Um, yeah, but the thing is, don't let them out there. When, like, I think we let them out there going, oh, they're going to go and pray about it. If their spouse isn't there, we know you, you lot. That's done deal. Spouse got to be there. But no one's thinking about it, praying about it, doing research. It comes down to the finances. And it's not even the finances, guys, because we know they're going to spend. They're going to spend that money. Let's say your care was 5000 they will spend that five thousand this year on something, right? Yep. Like everybody spent. It could be Starbucks. They spent five, but they will. They're spending that on something. It's like so, but but you know, it, it's expensive compared to what, right? They're spending that money somewhere else, and but this is it's, they're spending on something that's not as important as their health. Nor will it have a life changing impact like what we do. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a money issue. It becomes a value issue. Yep. And if you want to address it, but sometimes you address people are embarrassed to say it's the money. So, but at the end of the day, it's a value because I think, you know, fixing a lower back, you know, you like, but, but getting their quality of life back, getting uh, their job back, getting, uh, one, one guy, uh, one guy, uh, he, he said uh, his goals were, he wanted to stay home. And I didn't understand that. And then I realized he said that because he didn't want to go to a nursing home. Mm -hmm. That's how bad he was. So just think his goal in life was to stay home. Right. And so I said, listen, you know, and his every day I see him, you know, and I adjust him, I'm like, you stay at home. He's like, I'm staying home. I'm staying mm -hmm. home. So do you, do you understand that, guys? Like, do you see that simple? Mm -hmm. So your doctor, like, and I'm, I'm, the, I'm the king of long-ass doctor's reports. Like, I used to do two-hour doctor's reports. So, but if, if I was able to talk to them precisely to what – really really touch their heart it could be done in as little as one minute you know yeah. hey listen yeah no no i want to stay home all right well see that if i show the scan are you able to stay home with that no i'm not so what do you need to do i need to fix this right you know like you know, I'm, I'm maybe not a minute but you know what i mean guys it's like if you really truly hit the value proposition and what means most to them but a lot of times we're robotic we go in there we have a script and i think we stop shallow we stop at the subluxation we stop at the pain. Yep. Think, because right, people want to run away from pain. When you're right, John, they'll run away from pain. What, what happens when the pain's gone? Mm -hmm. There's nothing to run away from. So I think we just need to go one layer deeper and be like, well, what can you no longer do about that? Like, there's a reason why they're here, and you really got to search for um, the the nucleus of the problem. And that when you'll know, you'll know. Sometimes they cry, sometimes they don't. By the way, if someone cries does not mean they're going to become a patient <laughs> at all. So, you know, when someone cries, don't, you know, don't get all like, like, oh, yeah, they were crying, they're, they're in. No, no, no. Like, th that's just someone expressing emotion. You got to stay and you got to, you got to be like, okay, this, this is your goal and dream. This is your goal of life. And you almost become like a, 
a chiropractic life coach to them. And, uh, and, and subluxation is the reason why their whole entire life is going down the tubes. And, the, and that's one way of addressing to them. So that becomes your value proposition because you're right, man. It's the simplest principle in the world. And as chiropractors, we talk to each other and we're like, how do people not freaking get this? Like, right. this is insane. Because it's like it's a nice it's a, too many too many people think it's a it's it's a it's a nice to have not a gotta have right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's nice. It's nice to have. That's why they call. That's why they come to your office and say we got to stop care. Like out of all the things they're gonna cut, why why would they cut you? It's like when I go, did you cut your electric service off? Did you cut your cable off? Did you cut your Disney Plus off? No, <laughs> they keep all that shit. Why? Because they lost. We never started off with the right value. They didn't lose value in your care. We just, we don't have an anchor on them. Yeah. You see how I said that? So listen, if I'm adjusting someone in just seconds, and I'm like, hey, John, power's on. You're staying home, right, buddy? He's like, yeah, I'm staying home. Like, that's it. See, would that take me four seconds? I built more rapport there than you spine walking and talking about <laughs> um, the Atlas and, and all that. You know what I mean? Like, that's great and all, but it's like, Hey, listen, how's your golf game, John? Dude, it's better than ever. That's awesome. Like, you know, like, you know what I mean? Like, I know, I know their anchor. And that anchor becomes the, that becomes your rapport with that person. That becomes your relationship with that person. And that becomes, and, and, and that person feels that you know them more than any other medical doctor out there. Because what's the medical doctor do? They're like, got back pain? Why just take this? Like, they they could care less. Right. And, you know, because it's not that they don't care. It's just like, they're just, oh, symptom, pain pill. Here you go. But for us, we have to actually, what is the umbilical cord that's attached to something that's so meaningful in their life that at every time, as long as I tug that cord, I'm reminding them, hey, I know you, right? I'm in this with you, and and uh, we're going to get you back to doing that. And people, I, You know what? I appreciate when people uh, know that one thing about me that means the world to me. Yeah. Know? So. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share my points after yeah. uh, after our last roll here, and then we're gonna do uh, I'll share my closing remarks kind of thing, and then um, I'll give you some time to, to share some last thoughts with with our audience here. So um, yeah, we'll be right back, guys. Dr. Stu Hoffman, founder and president of Cairo Secure Malpractice Insurance, is the foremost expert in both risk management and risk avoidance. Understanding the everyday challenges of today's practicing chiropractor and the current public perception of chiropractic has made Cairo Secure the fastest growing malpractice insurance program of the last 28 years. Find out more at chirosecure.com. The IFCO is here to support you. Whether you are a chiropractic student, doctor of chiropractic, chiropractic organization, or member of the public, the International Federation of Chiropractors and Organizations is here for you. They recognize and support your right to practice and receive vertebral subluxation-centered chiropractic care and are here to ensure that right and spread access to that care throughout the world. Head to ifcochiro.org slash legendary for more. Be sure to give our friends over at Cairo Hustle a listen. They are bringing together some of the biggest names in the profession and learning from the greats. Cairo Hustle creates a safe space where chiropractic leaders share their stories and their passions with the world. Let's get hustling by heading to CairoHustle.com now. Thank you for allowing this brief disruption to take place. And now back to the program. Is <laughs> Dr. Zeno and I are talking off camera, so um, we we are having some fun tonight. This is a this is a blast, Doc. So I want to share some notes, and I, I can see you want to say some things too to no, to, good. You <laughs> to, uh, to the audience here. But um, first of first and foremost, I want to thank you guys all for watching watching on replay, listening on audio podcast when this comes out um, next season on the next season of Facebook Lives. Uh, so thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. It means the world to myself. Um, and I know Dr. Zeno enjoys sharing his expertise and his wisdom of, you know, 20 plus years of chiropractic practice in in one, you know, 50 minute uh, uh, podcast episode and interview. So it's a lot of fun to do this. If you guys have questions, just drop them uh, in the comments. And obviously I, I always appreciate the likes, the loves and the, and the shares. So, um, but I wanna go, Doc, 
deeper with you, right? And, and it's not necessarily deeper with you. It's more of like, hey, I want to hit some high notes that you said that I just want to reiterate for people because I think it's so important that we truly walk away from this podcast a smarter and a better person. And that is my goal every single time I come on here. It's like, if someone were to listen to this, would they be able to absolutely, you know, apply it tomorrow, starting tomorrow? And the answer is yes. The, the answer is simple, right? Like, it's not that hard to say, hey, hey, Bob, how's your golf game been? Hey, Susie, how's sewing going? How are your hands feeling? You know, is, is are they are they better, right? Like, this is these are things that you can connect with people on. And you said something called a chiropractic life coach. And I, I know, like, we throw around the term coach or mentor and all this stuff, this, that, and the other thing. Um, pretty, pretty easily. And, you know, we kind of discredit the, the power and the, the impact that we can have on, on someone's life. Um, and so I want to say two things and there are two things that if you're not doing right now, um, in your chiropractic practice, or even in like student clinic, outpatient clinic for my students out there and your peak or preceptorship, whatever you're doing, um, where you're dealing with patients, if you are not tying their goals um, to their care. Like if you're not asking about their goals, you're, you're not, you're right away. You're putting up a barrier saying, I don't actually, you know, you're just another patient to me. Um, you're not invested as a doctor or a clinician or an intern, um, in their care. And that I think is a, a really poor thing to be doing. Um, so incorporate goals, ask them what, are you, why, not only why are you here? Cause they'll tell you all about the pain that they're having. And you know, it shoots down both legs all the time at 9 AM on a Tuesday on a full moon. And it's like, okay, you know, let's, let's talk about that. But also, you know, what are you expecting from us? What are, what are you like, are you expecting the, you know, the miracle story of the one pop wonder, like, Hey, you know, you just get off the table and you're Superman or Superwoman. Like that's not, let's talk realistically. And what are you, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to decrease strokes on your golf game? Are you trying to stay at home from a nursing home? What are your personal goals? And then it ties me into my second point of bringing you along with them throughout their care journey. And I think that's really, really important because if you're not with, like, if you are just that their doctor and, you know, you're adjusting subluxations and, you know, removing interference, turning the power on all that stuff, that's great, but you're not actually invested in them and what they actually care about. And that, that value that Dr. Zeno talked about all night tonight, that value was never there. That value was never there in the first place. And that's why they're willing to pay $12.99 for Hulu, ESPN2, and Disney Plus instead of your, you know, care plan of $4,200 for the whole year. Um, and, and there's a big difference there because you're not putting, you're not putting the value on it and saying, Hey, I'm in this with you. And I want to, I want to be your friend along this journey as well as your, um, your gatekeeper to health pretty much. And I, I think that's really important. Um, the, the last thing I want to mention doc is we talked a little bit about the long game and I want to, I wrote one line. It says long game, deeper relationships. And I firmly believe that, right? The deeper you go with somebody, the deeper I go with you, the deeper I ask you questions about what you think about these things, the more, you know, not only heated you get, but that you have that visceral reaction of like, I care about this enough to share my truest opinion and my honest opinion and be as authentic with, you know, the legendary chiropractor podcast audience as I can be. So they learn something and I can provide value here, right? You're building that value because you're trying to create and build that relationship. And it happens on that deeper level. Like you said, you know, you got to go one level, even just one level below pain and symptoms and, and ask them about their goals, bring them along on uh, or bring you along on their healing journey or their journey of health and wellness. Um, so that's what I, that's what I got from what you said. I thought you, I mean, you crushed it. I'm going to go back and obviously listen to this. Like I always do when I convert all these to audio podcast, I go through, I listen to them because I, I think it's important, you know, for me to learn, I take full notes and everything. And it's like, I don't know everything and I, I don't try to know everything. It's like, that's why I bring smarter people on than me. And uh, I, I get to sit here and learn and talk to you guys as well. Um, so doc, closing remarks, leave us with something, you know, something positive, something 
something that's going to really be applicable tomorrow, if not, you know, whatever has already been in this, said in this podcast. Um, so leave us, leave us with something here, Doc. Well, you know, when you're talking, I looked at that sign behind you, and that really, oh, that really is way. on both sides of the coin. A do, yeah, everybody say, do more of what makes you happy. And I don't, and I, for, for any doc out there that feels like you're, you're, you're a salesman or something like that, you're not happy doing that, but you know what you're happy? You're happy when you're in human connection with somebody, right? So you follow what I'm saying? So back pain, like if we were just helping someone with their back pain, that's not happy to me. That sucks. But like seeing, like, you know, that's why, like, ask that patient, like, what makes you happy? And when you're asking them what can they no longer do, they're telling you something that they used to love to do, what made them happy they can no longer do. So you're helping them do more of what makes them happy. Yep. And when you help them do more of what makes them happy, um, then and you could you could t- you could get a connection with them on that, then you get happy, right? <laughs> so I mean, when when uh, she play, like, when you hear when Mary had a great time with her grandkids, and you hear about that, aren't you freaking happy? That's a huge win. That's a lot better than saying my back feels better. Right. So I just I think that sign the whole the season that amazing the podcast the answer of this whole podcast was really on the wall <laughs> and for both of us do more of what makes you happy. Yeah. And I think in, I think in practice anytime you feel skeezy slimy this or that it's not happy. Like what would make you happy? And everybody every car on this line you desire to help people and you love helping people and you and that makes you happy. And you want people to do things and get a life back so they become happy again. So if we just focus on, you know, what is taking their happiness away and chiropractic care is the answer to regain happiness in life again, uh, I think you'll have a happy practice. And at the end of the day, that's probably the thing that's going to matter more in life than anything else. But unfortunately, many of us, including myself, will have to look back and realize that hard truth versus uh, doing something about it now. So uh, the science says it all. Yep. I love it, Doc. I love it. Way to use props. The writing's on the wall, as they say, right? <laughs> yes. I love it. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. The Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. Tell your friends. Tell everybody. Tell your grandmother about it. I don't care who you tell about it. But tell somebody about the Legendary Chiropractor Podcast. Subscribe. Be sure to. Um, season 3. This is Season 4 of the Facebook Lives. Season 3 of our audio podcast is on iTunes, uh, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, um, cast overcast, whatever other platforms you get your podcast. It's on all of them. So be sure to just type in the legendary chiropractor podcast on any of those platforms and you will be able to listen, subscribe, um, and please, uh, rate and review. I, I absolutely love reading nice things about me. Um, and it, you know what you get, you get a couple haters here and there, but that's okay too. Um, but I, I love listening, you know, and reading nice things that, you know, you learned something, you had a great takeaway. Um, and I hope you did learn something tonight. And if you didn't, weren't able to catch this, um, I hope you hear it on audio podcasts. And if you are listening on audio podcasts later, um, I hope you're able to apply some of this come, come the next day that, uh, you're in the office and able to help people out, really get down to deeper levels, ask them their goals, ask them what they're, ha- what they were happy doing that they no longer can do and see how you can work with them. Um, not for them, but with them and their bodies to get them back to that level. Awesome guys. Thanks for tuning in and be sure to head to the legendary chiropractor.com for everything chiropractic. It's your one-stop shop for um, all things chiropractic. And we're actually revamping, Doc. Uh, it, we're revamping the entire platform. Um, so I'm working with a web developer now. And oh man, it's going to be so sick. It's going to be absolutely amazing. So when that releases, I will be sure to let all of you know uh, that that's coming live. And um, yeah, we'll have the po- podcast on there, the blog on there, the Facebook lives on there, everything that you could ever imagine and more. Um, so doc, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being on the show. You're always, you're always a hit and you, you we always have fun. Like I said, we always like to start the conversation with something, something like superhero or Disney related every single time. It never fails. Um, but thanks for being on. We're going on an hour five and I, I greatly, greatly appreciate you. And, uh, I wish you a very happy birthday as well. Thanks guys. Appreciate you. All right. Bye everyone. Have a good night. Bye.